I am going to show you how to make a ring today to match the bracelet that I made in my previous video. So this is called the easiest tennis bracelet and this is going to be the easiest tennis ring simply so that um, they remain as a set. And so this is what this looks like. Let me take it off and I will show you exactly what it looks like off the hand. So this is the back of the ring. And this is the front of the ring. Well, if I could handle it better, there we go. And it turns out really pretty, very wearable set. It's just really nice. I've been wearing this bracelet since I made it. It's just, I took a shower in it and everything else. It's just really um, a nice little set, really cute, very wearable. So let's go ahead and look and see what it takes to make this particular ring. Okay, for this project I am using 11-0 and 15-0 seed beads. These are Toho and they are the galvanized aluminum permanent finish. And then I'm going to be using some uh, more of the cuboid crystals like I did in this bracelet of course since it's going to be a matching piece. And I am using the royal blue color. This is a 4 by 4 millimeter cuboid crystal. You can get them from budgetbeadbox.com. She may be limited in some supply at the moment, but is currently ordering more and getting more in stock. So check back with her several times if you don't um, see what you would like on the website. Also, you can use a 4 millimeter fire polish bead if you would like. If you cannot get any cuboids, um, if you're outside the U.S., whatever your thing is, if you have fire polish beads already, try those. They work pretty good in this design too. I want to make sure that everyone can make it. So if you can't get a cuboid, which work the best, try a fire polish bead. Then we're going to be using eight pound um, nano fill. You can also use 10 pound. I used 10 pound in the bracelet works great. My eight pound just happens to be closer to me, so I grabbed it. I'm also going to be using a size 12 English beading needle, and you're going to need about a wing span of um, thread onto your needle. So just stretch your arms out from side to side. Measure from your fingertips along the length of your first arm across your chest, along the length of your second arm to your fingertips. That is a wingspan. And then thread your needle and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to start this project just like we started the bracelet. If you have watched that video, then you will know. So we are going to pick up onto our needle a cuboid crystal or fire polish bead, an 11 -0 seed bead, another cuboid, and an 11 -0 seed bead. I'm going to bring these down to the end of the thread and we're just going to go we're going to leave a short tail, just an inch or two, and then go up through the first crystal that you put on. Hold on to your tail and your crystal and pull your working thread until you get something that looks like this. Then sew back through it. So just sew all the way around all the beads. So I came from the crystal, I'm in the 11-0, I'm going to go into the next crystal. They may be a little loose at the moment, that's okay. As we pull through, we will tighten them. So then go through this 11-0 here. And then <clears throat> let's just tie a little knot here just to keep everything secure. So right where your working thread and your tail thread meet, you're just going to tie a small overhand knot. So make sure you leave enough thread to do that. Come here. There we go. Now, just pull on that um, knot as much as you can to get it as secure as you can get it. And then this is what you should have. Now we're right here between the 11-0 and the um, crystal. So we're going to go up into the 11-0. Give a little tug, but make sure that your crystal, or that you're not does not go into your 11-0 that you just tied because as you pull on it, you can pull it into that bead and you don't want to. So if you do, just pull on your tail and that should pull it back out. Then go up into the crystal here 
and pick up an 11O, a crystal, and an 11O, and go back through the crystal on the opposite side, just like this. Pull it through, pull the crystals up next to each other, and then sew back through the unit you just created. So we're coming out of this crystal, we're going to go into the 11O right next to it. And then sew all the way back around all the beads. So we're going to go into this crystal. This is just securing your stitch, tightening everything up, making it nice and neat and strong. Now we're going to go into this crystal. So now we're in the bead we connected to. We've made a complete um, circle around the beads. We're, we need to travel over to this bead to start our next unit. So we will just go into the 11O. And then we will go back down into the crystal. And again, we will pick up an 11O, a crystal, and an 11O. And let's get just a tad bit closer just so you can see what it looks like. And then let's go into this crystal right here. And then I just turn mine sideways and sew back through all of them. So I'll sew through this 11O, the crystal, and the 11O here. And I just hold on to my beads between my finger and my thumb just to make sure that everything stays nice and neat. And then once you're in your connecting bead, you have to travel back over to this crystal. So go into the 11O and then into the crystal right here. We're going to do six units this way. Now, of course, if you have a very small finger, you may want to only do four units. Just lay it on top of your finger and um, see how many units it looks like you will need to cover your finger. So I'm going to do six because I have very large fingers, so I need mine to cover a little bit more. Now if you're going to do a smaller finger or whatever you'd like, you can just lay it on there and see how many beads you need. For me, anything less than six for any finger is just not going to show up well. So I'm just going to go ahead and do six units. So I will have six cuboid crystals on my piece. So now I've connected another 11O crystal, 11O. Go into the opposite side of the crystal you're coming out of and then sew back around. And then once you're in your connecting bead, which would be the crystal, you are going to go through the 11O and the newest crystal you just put on. And then I'm going to make one more unit, 11O, crystal, 11O. And then I'll just sew back through them. And now I'm into my connecting crystal right here. And so I need to sew back over to the end here. But because this is my sixth unit, I am going to only go through the 11O seed bead right here. So this is where I'm coming out right here. Now I'm going to pick up three 15O seed beads. So the front of my um, ring is pretty much done. I just have to do the embellishments on the front. So I'm going to pick up three 15 O's and then an 11 O and then three 15 O's. Like this. And then we are going to go from we're coming out of this bead right here. We're going to just slide right over to the next 11O. Just right over the top of that crystal. And this is what you should have. 
Then you're going to pick up two 15-0 seed beads and you're going to slide into the next 11-0. And we're just going to do that the entire length of the six units here. So pick up two more 15-0 seed beads. We're coming out of this 11-0. We're going to slide into this 11-0 right here. Two more 15-0s. If they would cooperate with me, I'll pick them up. And then into the next 11-0. And again. Okay, so we're to the end of that. We need to do the same type of um, curve around the top bead that we did over here. Now, our tail, tail will be in the way a little bit, so just cut it down some. Not all the way, we can bring that down later. But just cut it down and then pick up three 15 0 seed beads. Oh, come on, 15 0s, they will not get on my needle. They're being a little stubborn there. Then we're going to pick up an 11 0 and then three more 15 0s. Jeez Louise. There we go. So we've got three 15 0s, an 11 0, and three 15 0s, just like that. And we're just going to go from this 11 0 all the way over to this 11 0. Now your knot is right there, so hopefully it's not in your 11 0, and you can just slide right into the 11 0 over your first knot, just like that. And then you will begin again picking up two 15 0 seed beads and sliding through the next 15 0 or the next 11-0, excuse me. And just kind of give it a tug, make sure everything is nice and tight. And these ones on the top here, we'll sew back through them to tighten those. So don't worry about those too much, but make sure you don't have a bunch of slack. And then go into the next 11-0 after picking up two 15-0s and pull your thread through. And again, And another time. Now, when we're putting our last one in, let's get really close. We are going to go from this 11 0 to this 11 0 and up into the first few 15 0s. So I can grab two the way my needle is angled, and I'm just going to go through them. Now, just to tighten everything and make it nice and neat, we're just going to sew all the way around all of the beads that we just embellished. So, I'm coming out of these two 15 0s. I'm going to go into this 15 0 and 11 0. And then I'm going to go into the next two 15 0s and just as many beads as I can slide through on this side. So, I'm just putting my needle through as many beads as I can. Sometimes you can go all the way through like I just did, just like this. And then just pull your needle through, tighten your thread a little bit, and then begin again where you, you left off. So I left off at my 11 0 on the tip here, so I'm going to go through it a couple 15 0s, and then I'm going to see if I can do the same thing on this side. I'm just going to go through all the beads right where I left off. I will begin again and slide through all of my beads. If you can't do it, don't worry too much, just do them um, where you leave off. You can exit and go back in anywhere you want, just as long as you don't leave any beads behind. And as you're passing through the way I am now, make sure your needle goes through each and every one, otherwise you will have an issue. So I can only get so far, so I'm going to just go there and pull my needle through. Now it's kind of caught on that knot, so I'm just going to pull it through gently with my pliers and then straighten out my piece. I don't want it bunched, so I'm just going to straighten it out and then I'm going to go back into the bead where I left off and pick up as many as I can on this side. 
and I'm just exiting right here in this 15-0. And then I'm going to go up to this 11-0 on the very tip of our piece. Straighten this back out. Make sure my beads are spread out nice. And I'm going to go into this 15-0 and exit this 11-0. Just make sure, no matter how you get to that point, that you exit that 11-0 right on the tip of your piece there. And then I'm just going to kind of straighten it out, make sure my beads look good, everything's kind of spread out evenly, and looks nice like this. And now I'm going to begin a little right angle weave here. So I am coming out of this 11-0 seed bead. I'm going to pick up three 11 O's. And I'm going to go into the opposite side of the 11 i I'm coming out of, just like this. And I'm going to pull this down. And then I'm going to sew back through these beads to make sure they're secure. So I will just go into this 11 i I'm holding it between my thumb and my finger to pull, get some tension, go into the next 11 i Do one bead at a time to retain the shape of the right angle weave unit. Then go back into the connecting bead on your piece here. Make sure I'm in camera. I should back up just a little here. And then we're going to sew all the way back into this bead. Well, all the way, two beads. So we just need to get to the tip bead so that we can do our next unit. So now I'm into this bead right here. I can begin another unit of right angle weave. I pick up three 11 0 seed beads and then I go into the opposite side of the bead I'm coming out of. I hold on to my beads between my thumb and my finger and just draw my thread through nice and um, evenly. Then I sew back through the entire unit. So I just go into the three beads, working my way back to the connecting bead. This reinforces your units and makes them nice and neat. Now we're going to go into the side bead and back into the top bead just to work our way over to make another unit. Let's do one more unit together and then what you will do is you'll just go to length and you will um, continue making your units until you can put them on a finger or a ring mandrel until you're just about, oh I don't know, four millimeters away from your connecting bead. So. Let's make some units and then we will go to length. When we come back, I'll show you what I've made and then we'll connect it together. So now I'm just, I've picked up my three 11 O's. I'm going back into the 11 O I'm coming out of on the opposite side. And then I'm just going to sew back through that unit to secure it. Once I get to my connecting bead, then I know I have to sew up two more beads so that I'm to the most outside unit here, or bead, right here. And then I can create another unit. So hopefully I was in frame there, but I was doing exactly the same thing as previously. Just continue making these units until you have the amount of units it takes to wrap around your finger or a ring mandrel to the size that you are trying to achieve. So I have taken mine, wrapped it around my finger. I've made 13 units of right angle weave because I have about a size eight finger. So I'm, I brought it all the way around till it just barely meets, just like that. And you can do that on a ring mandrel too, to the size that you want to make if you're making it for someone other than yourself. Now, <clears throat> I'm coming out of the very last unit here. And like I said, I've made 13 units. So if you want to make the same size I am, just count one, two, three, four, and so on. And <clears throat> now I'm coming out of this last unit. My thread is coming out of here. I've sewed around and secured my last unit. 
And what I need to do is bring my ring top over to this unit. So I just kind of wrap it around my finger. And make sure that as you do this, your thread is coming out of this side, right here. You want to go into this side of this 11-0. So what you will do is you'll pick up an 11-0 seed bead onto your needle. Let me straighten out my thread. And then you're going to go into the same side you're exiting here into this bead right here with an 11-0 on your thread and just go into that 11-0. right here and then pull your needle through and then pick up another 11-0 and go into the opposite side of the bead you started in just like that pull your thread through and pull it all down together just like this now we have to sew through this again to secure it so I'm coming out of this bead right here, I'll go into this one and I'll do one bead at a time just to make sure I retain the shape of my right angle weave. And then I'll go into this one here up into this one here and back into my connecting bead here. Now, I need to get back over to this bead. I'm all secure. I've got my unit all together. I need to get back over to this bead so I can start my embellishment down between the 11 o seed beads to finish my band. So I'll go into this one, into the 11 o on my piece, and then down into this bead right here. We are now exiting this bead right here, and we are going to begin placing 15-0 seed beads between each 11-0. So we'll just pick up a 15-0, and we will work all the way the length of our band on this side between each 11-0. So I've got a 15-0, I'm going from this 11-0 to this 11-0. And I'm just going to pull my needle through and pop the 15-0 down between the 11-0 seed beads. Let me reposition so you can see a little bit better here. And again, I will pick up a 15-0 and slide into the next 11-0 seed bead. Sometimes they're a little crooked, so you have to just kind of go at the angle they're at. As you pull your 15-0 down, it'll straighten everything out. And we just continue, pick up a 15-0, slide into the next 11-0. And we will do this the entire length of this side of the band. And when we get to the end, we'll be back and I'll show you how to sew over to do the other side. This will finish and strengthen the band, just like this. Continue putting your 15 O's in and we'll be back. Okay, so as you can see, I've finished putting all of them in except for the very last one. Now I have my last 15 O on my needle and I'm going to go up into the last 11 O right before the connection on the top of the ring. Pull this 15 O down and then I'm just going to slide into the 11 O on the top of the ring here that we originally connected to. And then I'm just going to slide down into the first 11-0 on this side of the band. And begin again picking up 15-0 seed beads and sliding between the 11-0s. Just like that. And just continue until you get all the way to the other end again. So one more here. Just give it a little tug so it tightens everything up and continue putting them in till we get all the way over to this end and we'll be back. Okay, so I've gone all the way around and you can see that my band has a nice finished look to it. 
Now I am coming out of the last bead before the one that attaches to the 11 O's that attach to the ring top. So I'm going to pick up a 15 O seed bead and I'm going to slide into that last bead right there. And then I'm just going to sew around this unit. So I'm going to go through this 11 O on my ring top right here and pull through. Then I'm going to go down this 11 O and the 15 O and a couple of them. So I'm just going to slide down the side of my band a little bit right here. It doesn't matter how many, just slide down a few and then right between this 11 O in the middle of my ring and the 11 O here. So I've exited a 15 O right before an 11 O. I'm going to go through the center of the unit like this, pull my needle through, and I'm going to guide my thread very carefully so that it goes between my beads. I've created a loop. I'm going to go through that loop and pull a knot down right between those two beads, just like that. And you can do that a couple of times. Now I want to work over to the other side of my ring just to give it more balance and more stability with my knotting. So I'm going through this 11-0 right here. I'm going to get even closer. This 11-0 here. I'll go through my original right angle weave unit. 11-0 here. And then I'll pop up into this 11-0 and a few. 15 O's until I exit right before an 11 O on this side and it doesn't matter how many just you know whatever it feels right to you then I'm going to go through the center of this unit again I'm going to create a loop put my needle through the loop and guide my knot down between the beads just like that give it a little tug and then sew down a few more. And you can do as much knotting as you'd like. I'm just going to sew down a few more. I'm going to go into this 11 0 and sew down a few more. And cut off my thread. But like I said, you can do that as much as you like. I'm going to leave a tiny bit of a tag here. And you can either use your thread burner or a lighter. My thread burner needs batteries, so at this point I'm just going to use my lighter and just lightly melt that into place. Now I have a little tag of thread here from my tail too, and I'm just going to burn it down. Just get your heat close, don't light it on fire, and just let the tags melt into the piece. I hope you were able to see that. I'm pretty tight. I might have been out of camera. So this is what this looks like. Now I'm going to see if it actually fits my finger. And it does. Fits it just fine. Just like that. And that is what that ring looks like. And it matches the bracelet that I made in my previous video very well. It's a really cute set. So I've been wearing this bracelet since I made it. It's just, it's so wearable. It doesn't flip, it's just great. So if you wanna make this bracelet, um, I'll put a link in the description box below, but it is the previous video I made and posted just a couple of days ago. So here's the ring, here's the bracelet, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye-bye.